football. Go on then, Dad says. Be off with you. I don't need your attitude while I'm working. See you in 40 minutes, I say, biting back a smirk. 20, Dad replies immediately as I knew he would. 30. 25. Deal. I salute him, bouncing on my heels. And keep your helmets on, he calls after us. I wave a hand in his direction in lazy agreement. Shen and I come down here to search for treasure. The tube lines are full of old decaying junk, washed in from the River Thames, which is what makes them so fun to explore. Shen is all about the unexplainable oddities, the curiosity cabinet treasures, things that won't necessarily be registered by a metal detector, ancient fossils, bleached white and smooth by time and pressure, fountain pens from the 15th century, ivory and textured silver, anchors from ancient ships dropped into the Thames when shipments came into harbour. I'm here for the jewellery. You'd be amazed at what you can find. Gold and silver and platinum, embedded with rubies and diamonds and amber and sapphires, cameo brooches of enamelled silhouettes surrounded by gilding, the kind of thing which takes hours to clean, rubbing cotton buds through the delicate filaments until the texture and design appear. I don't know why you bother arguing with your dad for more time, Shen says as he pulls his handheld metal detector out of his rucksack. You know he's going to take at least an hour anyway, once he finds something good. I glance back along the platform to where Dad has already crouched down to gather a lichen sample. The plants he studies all look the same to me, but each to their own. I've got to practice my bartering skills before the next jumble sale, you know that. Since there aren't any shops anymore, the local second-hand sales are the only way to get things, so competition over certain rare items is legendary. Shen hums. You can't let Mrs. Maxwell get the screwdrivers first again? Don't even joke. I still wish I'd got that chisel. The blade was Japanese steel. I'm never going to find another one like it. Just wait. I bet she only wanted it so she could give it to you for your birthday. I hadn't thought of that. At the end of the platform, we walk down the steps and wade into the grimy water covering the disused train tracks. It comes up to my knees and is so cold that it makes me shiver. I have to breathe through my mouth to ignore the smell. As we follow the curving metal rails along the line, Shen and I fall into a companionable silence. The only sound, aside from the swish of the water, is Shen's metal detector, which emits an oscillating beep as it passes over a piece of iron sticking out of the water. We're stirring up thick and putrid sediment as we walk. A rat swims past me, ears flapped back against its head. I twist quickly, grimacing, to make sure it doesn't touch me. As the tunnel drops down at a gentle incline, the water steadily deepens until it's almost at waist height. I grit my teeth and kick off the floor to start swimming. Shen follows me, more slowly. He's always cautious about hurting himself in places like this, whereas I'm more than willing to risk a grazed knee in the name of treasure hunting. When the tunnel ahead twists into view, I catch sight of something looming in the darkness. Look! What was that? Shen says. He's deaf in one ear. He fell off a horse while practicing jumps when we were ten. Sometimes when he's distracted or not paying attention, he misses things people say. I used to get really annoyed that I had to constantly repeat things to him, until I realized he wasn't doing it on purpose. There's something there, I say, pointing the torch on my headlamp to show him. The light picks out something large and metal. We both grin at the same time. It's a train. We've never found one before. This alone makes the trip down here worth it. We swim towards it. For once, I'm glad that the water is so deep. It means that we're level with the driver's door. When Shen tugs on it experimentally, it opens, releasing a musty cotton smell. He pulls himself up out of the water and into the train, hesitating a moment to see if I need help, I don't, before passing through the driver's compartment into the front carriage. After dragging myself out of the water, I take a moment to poke through the booth for anything interesting before following him.